welcome to our next guest. We're very excited. We have Danielle here from In Machines in Gracia. So welcome, Danielle. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, perfect. Shall I start? Yes, please take it away. Okay, perfect. I am going to share my screen. All right, can you see my screen? Okay, perfect. I will just go on. All right, so my name is Daniel Garcia. I'm an Italian living in Germany, and I'm going to introduce you our main project in the company, which is called the Open Lab Starter Kit. Uh, the Open Lab Starter Kit is uh, a European funded project in cooperation uh, with Fab City Hamburg. Uh, the Fab City network is a network of cities which basically um, uh, try to use Fab Labs to fabricate a lot of stuff uh, locally in the city. And uh, because of this uh, kind of uh, long-term goal, we are making all kind of uh, open hardware digital fabrication machines to be used in these cities uh, in order to, to produce and fabricate stuff. So I'm the CEO of a small company is, uh, having um, eight different employees. We we'll all have a background uh, coming out from Fab Labs. We all have been doing digital fabrication courses in, in, in Fab Labs, such as, for example, uh, the Fab Academy course. And uh, my company is based in a city close to Hamburg, so just 20 minutes from, from Hamburg in Germany. And we have been funding the company in 2021. We have produced 58 different uh, machine prototypes. You will see some of them uh, in the next slides. Uh, we have a space of around about 400 square meters where we have fiber laser cutter, uh, metal milling machines, uh, traditional uh, milling machines, um, different laser cutters, uh, both or even self-made. And uh, our specialty is also to build the machines together with the customers. So we have been doing 38 building workshops in seven different countries and in three different continents. And we also have been published uh, papers and uh, work with students for thesis um, and so on. So, but this is uh, this company. It's not the start because everything started in 2016, uh, where I personally built in my spare time a large format uh, laser cutter, which had built-in two sources. I guess all of you know the uh, CO2 laser, uh, but this laser also had a YAG laser, which was able to uh, engrave directly metal. So this machine was built in my spare time while I was working as a uh, fab lab um, assistant in a university in, in Germany. Um, and then what happened is that somebody saw the laser cutter and wanted to, to build it together with some, some students. And that was the start of, of everything. We basically uh, replicate this large format laser cutter, laser duo, uh, in one month uh, in another fab lab here in Germany. And we fabricated from scratch the, the entire parts. So starting from then, we've been building a lot of different uh, open hardware digital fabrication machines. For example, in 2019, we have been building the, the one large format uh, 3D printer, which is uh, listed in the top 10 open source 3D printers in the whole 3 dp uh, online magazine. And this machine is, by the way, also certified by Oshawa. And then uh, we started building many different types of machines. So smaller laser cutters for schools, which is currently in the FabLab inventory. So the FabLab inventory is an inventory of machines that you can um, basically purchase to have a maker space of a FabLab. Uh, in 2021, we installed some of these machines like a, small, a medium format 3D printer and a small format CNC milling machine uh, in a FabLab in Ghana. Uh, in 2022, we started the Open Lab Starter Kit project, which we will talk in these slides. And uh, we start building basically the entire range of machines as uh, open hardware machines that you can find in maker spaces, such as, for example, large format CNC router, um, 3D scanner, large format laser cutter, um, and so on. And so forth, we have proceeded in 2023 and 2024, and every year we try to bring new features. So for example, uh, we have been doing an open source CNC uh, machine with tool changer. We have been doing the uh, open source vinyl cutter, which you didn't find before. We have been building a scientific positioning device, a cylindrical positioning system for a university and so on. And now in 2024, we also have been building first machines with integrated AI, um, having tool changer in the laser cutter, for example, or a large format CNC with tool changer and so on. 
So the OpenLab Starter Kit is basically a whole set of machines that are completely open source. Um, so basically, they um, yeah, sorry for the let screen. Okay, uh, they all have uh, the complete uh, files published online, um, but also we publish the documentation in order to make them and to assemble them, and as well, all these machines are run by uh, open source uh, software. Furthermore, in this project, what we do is knowledge transfer. So these machines uh, are not just hardware for us, but they are more like a sort of uh, a knowledge package. Uh, therefore, we try to build these machines together with hand users, uh, transmitting all the knowledge that is necessary in order to assemble them, but also uh, to maintain them, to modify them, and to understand how do they work. And in order to do this, we also have developed our in-house documentation system, which consists of online assembly model, where you can see step by step um, the procedures uh, to assemble the machine. And finally, our designs are focused on standard parts and in production techniques that can be uh, easily accessible in makerspaces in, in Fab Lab. So you can see in the bottom some of the workshops that we have been running. For example, the, the one in Portugal was our first remote workshop where we shipped the machine and we, we were uh, helping them to build the machine remotely. We have been building a lot of machines in North Africa, for instance, in Tunisia, uh, one in Indonesia, and as well, we have uh, three machines in Ukraine. And I'm happy to say that they're still running because since the parts are quite standard and sourceable almost everywhere, um, basically they were able to fix the machine on their own without us uh, sending the spare parts uh, for them. So to have a machine quickly, uh, quickly working. So, and then we also have been building this in USA, for example. In USA, we did ship only some parts, like the custom parts of the machine, but most of the parts were bought uh, locally. So we also have been doing several publications uh, on this uh, project. You can see some of these here. Uh, I would say the most important for us is the journey of Fabulaser Mini. So this paper here highlights the whole process that we have been going through in order to uh, develop, so design and develop this uh, small format laser cutter, but also the process to produce the kit, to label the kit, to pack it, to ship it to the customer, to document it, and to basically uh, the, to sell it uh, to the customer. So basically it's from the idea of making an open source laser cutter to uh, have it as a product and sold as a kit. So this shows you everything. It also includes uh, some aspects about safety and machine certification. Here in Europe, we have to go through the, the CE certification. So we also have published a paper in the hardware X, the whole small laser version two is the, uh, two is the evolution of the Fabu Laser Mini uh, laser cutter. And we also have a book on digitally controlled machines that me and Jean Michel wrote. So if you're interested in learning more about uh, how to operate all these type of machines or how, even how to build one, you can, you can check this book out. So this is our documentation system. It's a open source software that we have been developing in house. Here you can see a little bit how does it work. We will also have a live demo about it. It's uh, a web-based software, it's completely open source. And uh, what you can do is basically see uh, in an online 3D viewer, the uh, 3D model of the machine divided in steps. And then for each steps, you can do some basic operations such as, for, ex for instance, exploding the parts to see how they're assembled. And, um, and also you can, for example, jump uh, to one step to another, uh, to assemble uh, subsystems uh, of the machine. And for each step, you also get some remarks, for instance, some notes about this uh, specific type of assembly. For example, don't tie the screws or at attach first one part and then the other one. One clue about this, this system is that it's entirely based on a 3D model because for us, it's faster to develop a new hardware machine than just basically um, uh, uh, make the documentation for it. So the documentation for us is slower than uh, developing the hardware itself. So the problem that we faced was that in the initial documentation system that was just a plain PDF, um, like an IKEA style assembly manual, uh, was that basically uh, we couldn't update it uh, very quickly. So when we made a change, we were forced to change the old pages where that change uh, was shown. Uh, and therefore this took very long time. Uh, in this case, the source for this online assembly model is just the 3D model. So the 3D model contains not only the data about the, 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 
uh, the meshes or, or the step file, for example, the NURBS and so on. But it contains also all the metadata, for example, the, the name of the step, all the remarks and so on. So every time we need to uh, update the documentation, we just update the 3D model of, of it. And that's uh, had speed up a lot uh, the process. So we also have a, a small live demo. So as you can see here, you can pan and tilt. Um, you can explore the parts, for instance. And you see these uh, red lines are pointing you to where this pan, these parts are assembled. And then if you click on each part, uh, you can see, for example, the parts itself. So if you click on the bottom panel, this highlights the bottom panel uh, to show you what the bottom, bottom panel is. Or for example, you have this aluminum profile, and then you're going to see uh, which uh, part are these aluminum profiles uh, over here. And this goes uh, then further for the all steps uh, that you can use to assemble the machine, basically, the entire laser cutter machine. This is uh, one of the machines of the overlap starter kit that uh, we will see in the next slides. What we also managed to do uh, is to have the wiring, the, the wiring uh, also displayed here. So you can basically check the location of the parts that uh, have to be connected in the wiring. And you can also see uh, here uh, which parts are connected to which other parts, and also the name of the cable that you are going to get uh, from the kit, for instance, and uh, the different connection with different, uh, with different colors. Another thing that we implemented is also how to. So for example, for the, uh, for the initial step, you will need to put some, um, some TNATs inside the profile here. Uh, so you can question yourself how you can put this TNAT. So this, as you see here in the screen, is one way of doing it. But the other way, uh, for instance, is to check our how to. So for example, here there's a how to, how to insert a TNAT in a profile. And then you go to the how to, for instance, and this shows you an animation on how to put uh, a TNAT inside the profile. So again, for us, uh, our machine are nothing without documentation. Our aim is that everyone will be able to replicate it. So therefore, huge efforts of my company are spent uh, in communication and in making this documentation as complete as possible. So you will find this kind of how to's even for the most basic basic things uh, like how to put a lock nut, um, how to use a set screw uh, in a motor, and so on. So everything we are talking about is uh, currently published in the OpenLab Starter Kit repositories. Uh, so even this online documentation system is published there, and you can download it and use it for yourself for documenting your um, uh, open hardware project in case you need some assembly procedures uh, procedures uh, for yourself. Okay, let's see if we can slideshow again. Yes, okay. So these that you see on the screen are the eight machines that we have been developing for the Open Lab Static Kit project. So if you follow the QR code, you go straight to the repository and you can basically uh, check uh, uh, all the information uh, for sure, all the or most of them have the 3D model already published, and you can even uh, try to replicate them yourself. So the machines that we have been making range from uh, small format uh, to large format CNC milling machines, small format to large format uh, 3D printer machines, small format large format laser cutters, a vinyl cutter, and a 3D scanner. So in the next slides, I'm going to show you for each of these machines a bit about how do they work. So we have been doing uh, the vinyl cutter. So the vinyl cutter is a, a sort of desktop device in this case, quite small. And uh, the machine is entirely made with um, 3D printed parts and CNC mill um, aluminum um, parts. So we have a... So the goal was just to make a sort of um, commercially comparable uh, vinyl cutter. And you can see here some of the specs that you mentioned. The construction is entirely made out of aluminium. There's a solenoid in the, in the head. And of course, you can also change the head to make some other designs. Okay. Yes, OK. Yeah, OK, so here you can see it's a 300 millimeter uh, cutting width with adjustable pinch rollers. 
And we also have our own uh, software. There is a um, uh, Orange Pi inside where you connect via Wi-Fi and you can uh, transmit, for example, the information uh, to the machine uh, to cut the job. We also have been making a small format 3D printer that uh, uses Clipper. Uh, this machine can move up to 1.2 meters per second with 20K uh, millimeter square second acceleration um, using, using Clipper uh, CoXY. Here you can see uh, the speed of the movement and, and some um, printing. We also have been making this small format uh, laser cutter, which can cut up to um, 10 millimeter uh, acrylic, can move up to uh, one meter per second. And um, it's made with basically aluminum sheets uh, of three millimeter and some simple aluminum profiles. We also have a small format CNC milling machine, um, which uh, it has uh, a 12 tool changer. Uh, so for the first time, this is more from a CNC milling machine and also it has a housing and, and coolant system. We also have been making a large format 3D printer. We have a video about it. So this uh, is 1.3 cubic meter 3D printer and it uses that um, CNC axis and a pellet extruder. And the surface, uh, create the mesh of the bed for bed leveling. And it can adjust the four points of the bed by probing the corners. And it, the all done is attaching the bottom points. It can also activate in a modular way the different areas of the bed uh, for heating up. So there's a camera, clipper is um, what we use. Yes, okay. So it's uh, fully enclosed, um, uses linear rails on all the axes, and um, we have these kinetic joints. These kinetic joints are basically some uh, steel ball spheres that are um, uh, uh, letting the gantry stay in some slots. And then basically the four points can have different heights um, from each other. So, and this is an example of the mesh scanning system that we can have. And then of course, this is for the bed leveling of the machine. So we also have a touch screen on board with Clipper and let's say those indicator about the status of the job and of the machine. And uh, we also have impl implemented sort of industrial electronics on it uh, because we also plan to uh, certify this machine for sale, uh, which includes for, for instance, meanwhile, um, uh, power supplies, onboard computer, um, certified drivers, and so on. We also have been making a large format CNC milling machine. This is fully enclosed. It has a complete pneumatic system. Uh, it's a full sheet. Sorry, uh, uh, Danielle, we just have to uh, we have to just cut you off just because we have uh, we have about forty other people. <laughs> uh, we have a bit of a schedule to keep on, but um, this stuff looks really amazing. If people want to know a bit more about it, where can they find more information? So basically, you can uh, check the square codes uh, that we have here, and you can directly access the all files about it. Uh, yes, I think it's just the square code here. Uh, or you can just make, uh, Google the Open Lab Starter Kit Fab City Hamburg um, or Open Lab Starter Kit GitHub, and you're going to find all information about replicating your machines. Amazing. We will make sure to get all that information. Uh, out to the people on the live stream. We'll paste those links in the chat. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, I just posted the link. Great. Amazing. Thank you for joining us. It was really awesome to see all the work y'all are up to. It's, it's incredible how much you've accomplished.